They pass the 300 metres mark and California Chrome takes the lead with Victor Espinosa doing little. He's two lengths, he's three lengths in front. Storm Belt's about to run into second spot, then hunting ground. But California Chrome is clear of Storm Belt and California Chrome glistens under the Maidan lights, winning easily. Welcome to the Paddock Pass with Brian Mariano on 104.5 The Team. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Paddock Pass. I'm your host, Brian Mariano. And as we look into this week's episode, we're going to go over California Crumbs prep race, which was very impressive. Now, my question is, how much do we really take into this prep race? Is this going to be the the race where we decide, okay, California Chrome is by far the favorite going into the World Cup? Are we dismissing the Europeans already? Are we not even looking at Frosted? Are we not even looking at the possibility of opportunity coming over? That is the question. And I felt myself while I was watching the race the other day feeling as if, well, is this really a big deal? Are we really making too much of this race, as we were talking about in previous episodes the past few weeks? And I felt myself feeling as if maybe this was just a glorified workout. Maybe this was just a glorified way of saying, yep, the horse is coming back. He beat nobody, and we're going to throw him in against the, the best horses in the world in less than a month. So that would you know, be part for concern, wouldn't it? I mean, Art Sherman did a great job, I think, of bringing the horse over there and prepping over there as opposed to what Bob Baffert wants to do with Opportunity and run him here in the United States and then ship him over to Dubai. So yes, I mean, the horse won relatively easy, but my question really becomes, and you can feel free to comment on the bottom on Facebook here if you want to get a hold of me at Twitter, at 1045 Mariano, that's a capital M. Let me know, how do you feel about this prep race? Was it really something that we can go crazy about, or is it something that we're just going to say, okay, yep, he did great, beat nobody, and that's it. We're, We're ready for him to run in a month. So I'm really looking forward to World Cup night next month because this is going to be the real challenge for California Chrome. He's had it easy in his first two prep races of of 2016, and it's really going to come down to can he beat the top European horses? Can he beat the top U.S. horses that are coming over against him after not really facing much of anything in his first two races coming back? So feel free to let me know both on Twitter, Facebook. Get a hold of me at any point. I love having horse racing discussions And we'll move on to this year's version of the Kentucky Derby, as this weekend is a massive weekend down at Gulfstream Park. The Fountain of Youth Stakes is the 12th of 13 races on Saturday, which concludes one of the best cards they've had all year. And as we look at the Kentucky Derby point standings as they sit right now, Gunrunner's on top after his win last weekend. Nyquist is second. You have Mohay Men, which is going to be the favorite this weekend in the Fountain of Youth. He sits fifth with 20 points and can take the lead with a win this weekend. And I'll tell you, along with my pick four ticket later in the show, that I think he does it, even though this is going to be his test. This is going to let everybody know whether this horse is ready to go ahead and, and compete against the top three-year-olds in the country. And I think he does not A little preview into my pick four ticket, that'll come later but he will be a single on my pick four ticket. Even though this is his toughest race he will face up to this point, he still should win. This is the Paddock Pass here with your host, Brian Mariano. We're going to take a look at this weekend's Kentucky Derby prep race and the Fountain of Youth, which is the next step before they go to the Florida Derby down at Gulfstream Park. After you look at this race, it is definitely going to be a tougher race for the favorite Mohe men than many will will believe, only having six horses in the field. But if you look at it, it has a lot more tougher competition than he's faced in his previous races. You have a very impressive horse right inside of him, the five awesome banner, who is coming off, who's, who's undefeated as well after winning the Swale down at Gulfstream Park on the 30th of January. And inside really is a horse that concerns me because I always have to look at Todd Pletcher horses, and that's the two Zulu. Although the horse has never run in stakes company yet, has passed all the tests that Todd Pletcher is looking for. And when Todd normally looks at a horse that he likes, a younger one, and wants to jump him right up into stakes company, they normally run very well. So the connections I really like here with Stone Street Stables, Todd Pletcher, and of course John Velasquez, who seems to win everything down at Gulfstream Park. I would be very concerned in this race. 
even though I'll share with you my pick four ticket later in the show, I do single in this race. I'm not exactly very comfortable with the single. I looked at a lot of the previous races before this and decided I wanted to go deeper in those races and have to single in this leg. So if you have the money to play, I would make sure you use the two and the five as well in your pick four tickets. I'm trying to keep it relatively small with my with my ticket, but if you have the money, I would recommend putting them on it. So as we move on to the other races throughout this weekend, I, I really centered on Gulfstream Park because of how well they put together this car. It's a ton of stakes races, a ton of tough races, and there's a ton of big favorites that can possibly get beat as well. So I have a few huge long shots this weekend. And one of them is in race seven. That's number four, Sweetgrass. This horse, 20 to one on the morning line, coming off a long layoff, hasn't run since Saratoga back in the Alabama, which was a loaded race this year for Phillies, or last year, excuse me. And I think this is a huge drop down, which is perfect for this horse. Huge field, 20 to one. This week, I'm bringing back the big show bet, and this is going to be the horse that I'm using in it, the big show bet. Number four, Sweetgrass, that's race seven at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Make sure you have something on it, because this horse is going to be near the lead, flying late. Make sure you have something on it, because this horse is going to be around when they hit the wire, and I think it's going to be at a huge price. We were joking today at the studio about, you know, Brady Farkas has been salty all afternoon, because his, his Shen boys have to play against Green Tech. So, Brady, I went hard to handicapping this weekend so I can give all the, the people of the Capital Region their winning picks this weekend. I found a horse just for you at Gulfstream Park, race 11. He's number seven. Don't be so salty. So, Brady, feel free. Open your wallet. Go play this horse. I actually think he has a chance. And feel free to... to soothe yourself with a little money after you've you've taken some from me the past couple weeks winning the prop bet pool for the Super Bowl. Make sure you make some more playing this horse. That's race 11, Gulfstream Park. Feel free to go at it because I'm telling you, the horse will be around and I'll take my 10%. Moving on, this is the Paddock Pass here. I'm your host, Brian Mariano, and we're looking at another race on Saturday, which is going to be my best bet of the day, and that is race four, the horse is number five, XY Jet. Now, this horse has a ton of speed. It does worry me a little bit that there's a lot of speed in the race, but I just think that this horse has a ton of class and is just flat out quicker than all of these. So I'm going to have tickets going on with XY Jet. I, I would be concerned of the price. The price is probably not going to be very good. I would hope for seven to five but I would probably be looking more towards three or four to five. So if you're playing the early pick five, the early pick four, this horse should be a single on your ticket. I really don't think he gets beat at all this week. As we move along here on the Paddock Pass, of course, I'm your host, Brian Mariano, and we'll get to my 50-cent pick four ticket right now. And this was, again, as I reiterated, a really tough sequence to choose because a lot of the earlier races are tough to just narrow down. You can't really just go ahead and say, you know what? I like this horse and this horse only, and this is the one I'm going to go on. At least from what I handicapped before the show, it wasn't that easy. And if we start in the 10th race at Gulfstream Park, which is going to be an allowance optional claiming of 62.5 for four-year-olds and up, this race was wide open. I could not narrow this race down as long as I looked at it. The most I narrowed it down to was five. And this is another one where I have a couple long shots in here that I think have a chance. And that includes even the horse on the outside, Tapitation, with Ralph Nix and Tyler Gaffleyon. This horse has a three-race win streak, one last time out against three-year-olds and up, and a $41,000 non-winners of one. But that was in December, so now coming off a little bit of a layoff, right back into fresh company, I really think this horse can have a chance, especially at a price. So I went five deep in this leg. I went five, seven, eight, twelve, and 14 in the first race of the late pick four at Gulfstream Park. That's race number 10. If we move to race number 11, this was another one I thought was pretty wide open. I went four deep in this leg, and this also includes a few long shots. So I'm hoping that with going deeper in these earlier legs that I can grab a price and then be able to single with Mohe Men and, and be able to narrow the ticket down later and still hit a big score. 
So my longer shot here was the three Osby. And he's 15 to 1. Marcus Vitale's having a very good meet down at Gulfstream Park. Nick Juarez is at 14%, which is pretty good for the limited amount of rides that he's had. And this horse seems to be around the lead. And after handicapping the race a little bit, I noticed there was some speed, but not an overall abundance where this horse can't be involved at all. So I used him making sure that, you know, if I can get the first two legs with some some bombs, that I would be okay. So this leg, I went three, five, six, and 11. I couldn't leave the 11 out. My boy Chad Brown, Javier Castellano on the outside, already was in stakes company last time out and really can have a nice shot in this leg coming up. Then we get to the 12th race, which is the Fountain of Youth. And of course, I singled the six Mohe men. The horse just looked that good in the Holy Bowl. And until he gives me a reason not to use him, I'm going to have to use him. I am concerned about the five awesome banner who has just shown a, enough quickness to be involved in a race like this. The only thing I do question is the mile on a 16th with this horse. So I do see awesome banner going to the lead, but I see junior Alvarado being able to sit right off of him and then be able to pounce as they hit the top of the stretch. If you can use and you have the, the deeper pockets than I do, and can go deeper, I would also include the two. So if you, for a deeper ticket, I could go two, five, or six, but for mine, I'm going to single the six Mohe men in the Fountain of Youth this weekend. And the last race, it, it, this one was also very wide open, but this one I felt I could narrow down, which is hard to do in maiden special weight races because there's not a lot to go on, and I tend to go with more horses that have experience. So I looked at the one immediately for Todd Pletcher and, and Javier Castellano, an American Patriot. This horse just missed at a main special weight on January 30th, only being out a half a length and flying late. So I, I do like horses, especially on the turf down at Gulfstream, that can have a nice closing kick and made sure I used him as well. And I looked again at the 10 for Bill Mont and Jose Lascano, who also has the same type of running style, will be a little bit mid-pack, maybe back flying late at the end and i think these two will be the ones deciding it as they hit the wire so we'll recap real quick race 10 we went five deep five seven eight twelve and fourteen the 11th we went four deep three five six and eleven we singled mohe men in the fountain of youth and then we went two deep in the 13th and final the one and ten and hopefully this week we're gonna get back off the schnei and get ourselves a winning ticket that's a 40 dollar ticket for this weekend's Fountain of Youth Late Pick 4. I'm going to play it. I hope you do as well, and we'll get some money back in our pockets. This, of course, is the Paddock Pass. I'm your host, Brian Mariano, and feel free to get a hold of me, as I said earlier in the show on social media. My Twitter handle is 1045 Mariano with a capital M. Get a hold of me on there. If you have any big picks you'd like this weekend, I'll be playing races tomorrow. If you have a nice look at a horse that you want to let me know about, or if you want to just tell me that I missed on one, that's fine too. Feel free to comment. If there's anything you like or don't like about the show, something you want to hear more about or not, get a hold of me and I'll find a way to make the show better for you guys because that's that's what it's all about is you, the horse player in the Capital Region, making this show better every week. Thank you guys for listening. Get a hold of me on Facebook, Twitter. Let me know how, how I'm doing and hopefully we have another winning ticket coming in this week. This, of course, was the Paddock Pass. I am your host, Brian Mariano, and hopefully all your pick four tickets are winning ones.